And then I'll come in right there. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I come mm-hmm. in right here. Okay. Or no, right here. Okay. Good evening and welcome to Bragg Memorial Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida for tonight's MEAC digital broadcast on ESPN3. Tonight's game features the Florida a and Rattlers against the Savannah State Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Melvin Beal along with Alfonso Barber. This is the first conference football game for these two teams, and they're both looking to get off to a good start. Now, Florida a and they're trying to recover from a loss to Jackson State last week, a game that they literally came down to the last seconds. Yeah, and Melvin, those are always the toughest ones, in addition to it being coming or coming down to the last seconds, rather. Uh, it was also here at home, and I think that's going to contribute to the edge that the Rattlers come out with here tonight, and uh, whether that's good or bad depends on the discipline of the players and the football genius of these coaches now for Savannah State they didn't play last week they actually couldn't play because of the ravages of Hurricane Florence now Jackson State had a similar situation last week where they didn't play because of hurricane damage how does that affect Savannah State being off a week it affects it or it affects them in a lot of ways but in short uh, in short it just it comes down to what type of program, what type of team they are. Uh, Jackson State, similar situation like you said last week, uh, came in here with the excuse to be thrown off their game, to be rusty. Uh, but they were hungry and they delivered. And if Savannah State comes out with the same attitude today, uh, they could have the same outcome as well. Well, we're almost set for kickoff here. When we return, we'll talk about some keys to the game as you're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. One team will claim the title, MIAC champion. In MEAC competition, Savannah is 0-2 coming into the game, and the give is up the middle. And the option is swallowed up there by the Rattlers, 15 on the tackle. And it'll bring up second down and two yards to go. And that's Elijah Richardson stepping up early. Let's see if this Rattler defense uh, can shut down the passing game. So the quarterback keeps the ball and gains about five yards on the play. And that will bring up third down and about five yards to go for Savannah State. And that's quarterback T.J. Bell. Uh, his offensive coordinator is definitely happy to see that. He looks very comfortable running that pitch play uh, where you see that fake pitch right there. It gets him a few extra yards. Big play for the Savannah State Tigers as they face a third down and about seven to go. And he's looking and looking, being pressured by Rattlers. And an inner big, big, big play. 
down to number 23 for Savannah State. Kind of a uh, declimatic or anachronistic situation or play there for the Rattlers. Pre pretty good defense there up until that throw, uh, but the quarterback able to make some time with his feet and found an open receiver down the field. That completion was to James, a kick glider, 5'8", senior. Quarterback is back. Bell patient. is looking, and he's patient. got a loads of time. He lobs the ball up and out of bounds as he couldn't find a receiver on the play. It's going to bring up second down and 10 yards to go for the Tigers. Fans want a, a holding call right there as they boo the refs. I'm not sure if they want to get that party started uh, after the week that we had last week, Melvin. Rattlers penalized 15 times for two for 177 yards last week. A lot of laundry all over the field. Second down, 10 yards to go. The give is to Jalen McLeod, and he finds his way inside Rattler territory close to a first down. No defensive end or outside linebacker there to pick it up, and that's just the easiest first down that you're ever going to see. Third down and about two yards to go for the Tigers who are driving. This is their first drive. We're just underway here in Bragg Memorial Stadium. 12 minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Well, I assume it's not the easiest first down if it's third down. Though, <laughs> yes, exactly. And right there. And a fumble on the play picked up by a Rattler and... They're going to call the ball dead right there at about the 47-yard line. A very active Rattler defense. Flying to the ball. It looks like the whole defensive presence was over there. Uh, referees ruled it an incomplete pass. Incomplete on the play as Savannah State, a team that has not scored a touchdown this year, prepares to turn over the ball to the Rattlers. The punter for Savannah State is William Chandler, and he'll be kicking deep. Let's see if the Rattlers, they had a, a, a few big plays on special teams last week that were called back to due to penalties. And this one here is tipped. It was tipped and close to roughing on the play, but the Rattlers will take over the ball at about their own 23-yard line. And we have 12 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score here at Bragg Stadium in Tallahassee. So the Rattlers last week, a little bit of clock mismanagement there in the end. But their offense, for the most part, moved the ball. Uh, definitely the coach saw some, some success early in the game and also uh, towards the end. Uh, just the rough patches in between and all the penalties in between is what they need to work on. Uh, outside of that, I'm pretty sure the head coach is feeling pretty confident about what his team can do. Uh, thinks they finally bought into a system. And I think today will be the first game that we actually see um, this head coach system being run. Uh, people forget that th this is his first year and you have to detach yourself from what you've been doing. And the players may have done that uh, today. We're back here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. Florida and m about to start their first possession of the day. Savannah State actually got two first downs on their first try. And the Tigers look pretty impressive, but they turned the ball over on downs. And Florida A&M is setting up to start their first drive. We had a couple of players from Florida A&M that were honored this week in the MEAC. And one was the punter, Chris Fadil, and he got special teams player of the week. So great game, and a punter is important. Uh, punter kicker, uh, all of those uh, special guys that we take for granted sometimes, especially last week uh, in seeing how that game was won or lost, whichever way you look at it. Uh, those guys mean more than you could, you could think. Well, we had the MEAC Players of the Week. The Offensive Player of the Week was the quarterback Akevius Williams from Bethune-Cookman. Defensive Player of the Week was cornerback 
Dante Small from Morgan State. The offensive lineman of the week was Josh Miles from Morgan State. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, specialist of the week was Chris Fadul from Florida A&M. And the rookie of the week was Xavier Smith. So, fam, you had two people there as we get set for the Rattlers on the 23-yard line. Ryan Stanley is the quarterback. He's had a pretty successful time thus far uh, passing through the air this season. Uh, so we'll see if they'll come out with a balanced attack similar to what they had last week. It looks like the give on the play was to Devin Bars for about two yards. It'll bring up second down and seven yards to go for the Rattlers. And Devin Bowers is back there with uh, some good company. They have Bishop Bonnet back there, Ricky Hemerless, some guys who were making some noise last week, uh, and then some big plays, once again, that were negated by penalties. And the give as the Rattler ball player is stopped in the backfield for no gain as the Tiger defense steps up to the occasion of finds out. John Wilson there. Good open field tackle. It's not as easy as it looks, especially when it's number three for the Rattlers that you're taking down. Uh, he had some big plays himself uh, last week. Looks like a penalty has been assessed on the play against Savannah State, which is going to bring up a second and about four yards to go, if not three, for Savannah, for Florida and Ann. Stanley. One back in the backfield, man in motion, and he drops back to pass. And he's looking, he's looking, and he overshoots his receiver on the play. And Stanley showing his arm early. And Marcus Williams made some plays again last week. So, uh, like I said, I, th I think this offense is still comfortable. I think they're still confident. Uh, they don't look to be panicking. Uh, here we are, third and short. And they have an opportunity to convert and still march their way down this field. Second, third down, and about two for the Rattlers. Ball is marked on the 34-yard line. And here we like are. A penalty on the play as the marker is down on the 30-yard line. And it looks like the Rattlers are going to be called for offsides. And the ball will be marked on the 27-yard line for Florida a &M. And that's one of the major keys of the game uh, is for the Rattlers to play a clean game. Of the 29 penalties that were called last week, uh, the Rattlers had 15 of them, as you said earlier. Ryan back to pass. He's getting heat, and the ball is intercepted. Intercepted on the play by a Tiger. And he is advancing that ball. He may go all still, the way. He could go all the way. Flags on the play. That was Vanquist Bonner with the interception for Savannah State in a big turnover early, Afonso, for Florida a and And that's uh, Stanley in the pocket. He tried to stay there as long as he could, but the, the pressure was coming. And uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if he felt it or not, but that ball just kind of left a little weird and fell into the hands of the DB. Injured player down on the field. That's done. He's getting attended to. And Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M. 11 minutes left in the first quarter. Savannah State with a big interception of a Ryan Stanley pass. They actually ran a play right here. We have a stoppage in play on the field as there's a penalty being assessed against Florida A&M right now. And the referees are moving the ball down to the 25-yard line of the Rattlers. And it looks like Savannah State will take over there first and 10. And the Rattlers have to stay out of that penalty game. It's absolutely imperative. Not biting there is the Rattler defense. And that's going to be Richardson again. Elijah Richardson on the tackle. Like the number 15, Elijah Richardson. Second down and about three yards to go for Florida. 
for Savannah State. Their ball is marked on the 25-yard line of Florida a and And the give is up the middle to Rashad Saxton, who was met by a host of rappers. And the front four has to have a big game. Uh, that also takes some pressure off the DBs to know they don't have to uh, turn their head around that often to help out on the running game. Uh, if they keep doing that. Third down. third down and 12 to go for Savannah State as they attempt to get something off the interception. The ball is marked at about the 27-yard line up Florida a and T.J. Bell is your quarterback for Savannah State. He's back to pass. He's looking, and he has a man open at the 15-yard line, and that looks like Saxton again and more laundry on the field. And I think that's going to be a face pass uh, there, the defender. Didn't intentionally grab it, but got it. And uh, that was actually uh, Devon Gibbons, the second string quarterback, just slid in there. I didn't quite see him myself, Melvin. Yes. Uh, but delivers right there. They have been playing two quarterbacks this year. Gibbons got a lot of action last year as a sophomore. And T.J. Bell was their big player coming into last year, but he got injured in the second game. Rattler defense scurrying around. Gibbons gives the ball off to 86, which is Jamichael Baldwin, and Savannah State scores as they go up six to nothing at 9:15 in the first quarter. Runs through a man. Wow, impressive drive by Savannah State, aided on that play by a penalty as they get set for the point after. Giovanni Lugo is the kicker for Savannah State. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. With nine minutes and 15 seconds remaining here in the first quarter, Savannah State strikes first as they go up seven to nothing over Florida AM. And they really highlighted some great play by their wide receiver, Jamichael Baldwin an all-MEAC player who is second in the MEAC in kickoff returns. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, as Savannah State leads Florida a and m seven to nothing here at 9-10 mark in the first quarter. Afonso, Savannah State with a big interception, capitalized by scoring. A little sprinkles on top of that is uh, the fact that the Rattlers seem to be back at their old ball game, uh, what, they, what they did last week as we kick off here uh, with the penalties helping out Savannah State there. Ball is fielded by a Rattler, and he breaks free, and it's going to be driven out at about the 27-yard line. Nice patience shown there. That time Marcus Williams looking, at, looking for a way to be, become involved here for the Rattlers, get some sort of energy going for the home stadium. Rattlers set to start their second possession on the afternoon. There is another penalty. Penalty marker down on the field. And it looks like it's going to be offsides against Savannah State. And they're going to move the ball. Well, actually, they moved it up to the 32-yard line where the Rattlers would take over first down and 10 yards to go. Stanley, standing back with the running back right by him, four receivers out. Looks like Bishop Bonnet may be behind him. And the give is up the middle to Bonnet, and he's stopped by the Rattlers in there, and actually it's number 32 from Florida a and And that play was just blown up. The offensive line right there not getting what they needed to 
get done. And you got to fill up those holes. If not, the linebackers will do it for you. Second down, 12 yards to go. Florida a and &M. Stanley. After the motion again. Gives the ball to Hans Supre. And this is where it gets interesting for the Rattlers. It's going to be a third and long situation. Uh, thus far, they haven't been able to rely on anything in particular to move down the field. Um, and after coming off of that tough loss last week, this is where that edge that I was talking about comes into play. Do you have the heart or are you just going to give up? Florida a and third down, 12 yards to go. Ball marked on the 31-yard line. Ryan Stanley is your quarterback. And there's a timeout on the field called by Florida a and with seven minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Savannah State holding on to a seven to nothing lead. We'll take a time out on the field. You're watching me at football on ES. Play new content first on PS4. PlayStation. We're back here in Bragg Stadium. Uh, ball in the hands of Stanley. Let's see what he can. Do. And he's going to be sacked. He's going to be sacked on the play as the Rattlers will turn the ball over. Jackson State defense is humming up on them. Pocket just collapsed on him there. Uh, has to be aware of how much time he has, but, and then it wasn't much. And the Rattlers are going to bring the punting unit out now. Fourth down for the Rattlers. Their punter, Chris Fadul, specialist of the week in the MEAC. He's set to punt. He has been averaging about 47 yards on the punt. And this is a booming punt that's received there by the Savannah State Tiger. And there's some more of that laundry. So let's see what this is about. Uh, it was thrown near the sideline where the fly guys are. Seven minutes and three seconds remaining in the first quarter. Savannah State seven, Florida and M zero. The call is illegal substitution. And Savannah State will take over at their 35 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Now, Savannah State has been alternating in their quarterbacks. Right now, T.J. Bell is the quarterback. This looks like it's going to be a running play. It's a fake run thrown out to the flat area and complete. Ball is complete to DeAndre Sneed. And he goes down after about an eight, seven, eight-yard game. Um, and uh, offense did a good job there of selling something that the formation they came out to uh, looked like it was about to be a run play, and the defense bought into it. Second down and two yards to go for the Tigers. The give is up the middle, and it looks like he has the first down. Well, I tell you, last week, Melvin, we had two uh, powerful running backs that were pretty small as far as uh, everybody else on the field out there. It seems that today is going to be more of the same. We've seen two hard-nosed running, uh, running plays uh, from the Tigers. That carry was by Jalen McLeod, and it sets up Savannah State for first and 10. The ball is marked on the 47-yard line. Bell is back. He's looking. He slips. He slips. He's got some pressure from the Rattlers. Ball is being floated, and it's incomplete. And that ball seemed to go, get away from him, Afonso, but he had a couple of rattlers hanging on to his legs. Definitely had someone hanging on to his legs, someone drilling him into the ground. And uh, the rattler defense there has to come up with the, with the turnover uh, just, just by the way that this game is going. 
Uh, and it was almost actually caught by the Tigers there. It's a sigh of relief for the Rattlers. Second down and 10 yards to go for Savannah State. Ball is marked at their own 47-yard line. Bell is the quarterback, finds a receiver out over the 44-yard line. And it's number 44, ironically. And that's Stavian Stevenson, 6'3", tight end, 220 pounds out of Athens, Georgia. Big kid, big kid. Savannah State looking at a third down and one yard to go as they're putting together a nice drive. Nice and methodical. Uh, kind of beating down this Rattler defense with the assistance of the sun, uh, despite the shadow that's on the field. And so far, so good. And the give is up the middle, and it looks like it's going to be a first down as Jalen McLeod buries his way for about a couple of yards, and it'll be enough for a first down for Savannah State. Now, that was another hard-nosed run, uh, but again, um, this may be a reoccurring thing for this Rattler defense. It's arm tackling. Uh, if, you, if you have to go over angle tackling again in practice, then you have to. But these guys have to start putting their shoulder pad where it needs to be and stopping this offense where they are and uh, stop with the missed tackles. First down, 10 yards to go. Savannah stayed. And the give is up the middle to McLeod again. And he's going to pick up about three yards on the play. And that's going to bring up second down and about seven yards to go for Savannah State. There seems to be a discussion down on the field. And it's going to bring up second down. Eight yards to go for the Tigers. Gibbons back to pass. And it's Bell and he misses his receiver. And that Sneed tried to lay out, almost had it. Uh, but I tell you, T.J. Bell, if he keeps buying, his, uh, buying some time, buying his team some time with those legs, uh, it paid off for Jackson State last week. Well, certainly Savannah State, after losing 77 to nothing to Miami and then losing 52 to nothing to University of Alabama, Birmingham, they picked up some really good skill sets playing against those FBS schools. Definitely used to playing with a certain strength and speed. Uh, right there, interception right through the hands of the defensive back. That's going to bring up a fourth down for Savannah State. And they'll turn the ball over. And Florida a and really needs to get something going on offense. Here with four minutes left in the first, if they don't put some points on the board or if, if they don't get any movement for that matter, uh, they're going to put their defense in a terrible position where they're tired back on their side of the field and having to stop this offense again. Chandler punts, and they're going to let it hit. It is stopped, and it's going to be down. Caught by a Savannah State player right there on the six-yard line, and the Rattlers are going to stop deep in the territory. We're going to take a timeout here on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. Ryan Stanley is your quarterback. Florida a and First and ten. They're on their six-yard line. The give is up the middle. And to the Rattler back. Bowers. Finally. A, room, a, a run with some space. Uh, he was able to break that barrier and go a little bit untouched. The Rattlers need some more of that. Second down, three yards to go. Florida a and Ball is marked. At about the 12 yard line. And the give is up the middle. And it looks like it may be Byers as he gets the first down. And Florida AM is going to advance the ball. 
and that too was a nice patient run waited for his blocker to get where he needed to be and then just take the easy yards first down 10 yards to go florida and yeah finally switching up the formation that we're seeing bowers with a run of about five yards he's going to take the ball up to around the 25 yard line and it's going to bring up second down and five for Florida and out. And it looked there. It seemed to me the Bowers went the opposite way of his blockers. He said he saw something better. He got about six yards. Stanley is your quarterback for Florida and out. And he passes out in the flat to Xavier Smith for a completion. Florida a m gets the first down on the play, and this is their second first down. Okay, this, this possession seems to be a bit different than any other, and once Willie Simmons gets this offense rolling, he likes to cut the tempo up a bit, and that's what we're beginning to see. First down, 10 yards to go. Florida a m ball marked on the 34-yard line. As Stanley is back to pass, he's looking, he's looking, and it's complete to Marcus Williams for about a six-yard game. They're going to mark the ball at the 41, and Florida a &M seems to be getting some rhythm to their offense. The running game, the passing game, both are starting to come together, and what that does is confuse the defense because they don't know what's coming. Second down. Four yards to go. Florida and him to give is up to middle to Bowers, and he's going to be stacked up by the interior of the Savannah State defense, led in there by Cam Brown. And that's going to bring up third and short. Rattlers aren't going to waste any time, but this is a crucial third down, uh, the most successful drive uh, certainly thus far of this game for the Rattlers, and for it to end on this third down would be crushing two men in motion oh big play Ray oh. is blown up in the backfield <laughs> yes and on that play it looked like it was Stefan Banks for Savannah State I don't know if he's been studying his playbook that well or. So what happened was there was a illegal player on the field, I guess, for Florida A&M. Illegal procedure is going to be declined by Savannah State. That brings up fourth down for Florida A&M. Well, in that case, it's a bad penalty, but not so bad, I guess. You weren't going to get the first down anyway, Mr. Melvin. Chris Fadul set to kick off the ball. Back deep for Savannah State. This one it's has some Michael hair. Baldwin. And he Big shakes play. out of a tackle. Big play. Nice move. Doesn't get much after there. Uh, and he'll be wrapped up around the 15. And there is a flag on the foot. Well, do you see a trend here from well, last week to this week? Regardless of whichever team it's on, we've seen our fair yeah. share of yellow flags on Bragg Stadium's field. We're here at Bragg Stadium with 31 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Savannah State 7, Florida A&M 0. Penalty is going to be a assessed against Savannah State. Looks like the referee is going to place the ball down on the five-yard line and it'll bring up first down and 10 yards to go for Florida and him to call holding on Savannah State. And this is what the Rattlers need. They need to dedicate themselves to a clean game from here and capitalize on every opportunity that they have. Right here, the Tigers are in their own five. You have to make something happen. The give is up the middle, a big hole up the middle for Savannah State. 
Nice play. It looks like it may have been Saxton. Definitely. Not in the middle. Definitely. Rashad Saxton, five foot eight, 170 pounds. You know he's not on the field for no reason, showing why uh, the, the, the coaching staff has him on the field right there. And he's from Jacksonville, Florida. So definitely Savannah State has been recruiting Florida like everyone else in the country. Yep. And uh, also, he's used to these weather conditions, so uh, that's not going to change anything for him. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC on ESPN3. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Savannah State has a seven to nothing lead over Florida A&M as the Tigers picked up a first down and their quarterback has running room and he's gonna take this ball out over the 50 yard line on about a 24 yard run. Afonso, they are ripping through the Rattler defense. And that is Devon Gibbons. It seems to be this two quarterback thing that they have going on is TJ Bell is more so uh, the passing quarterback and uh, Gibbons after that play there is more so the running quarterback, but they can get it done in both areas, and it's really throwing this Rattler defense off. First down, 10 yards to go. Savannah State ball marked at the 49-yard line of Florida a and to give is up the middle for the running back, and he finds his way down to the 40-yard line. That's a nice run for about 40 yards on, I mean, about nine yards on the play. Sudden success coming up. Through the running game, before this, just uh, 27 yards coming off of 11 attempts uh, for the Tigers, but two big plays there. Second down, two yards to go, Savannah State. Another handoff, and this one will be met after picking up the first down. Looks like the give was to Jalen McLeod, and he appears to have enough for the first down, and the chains are moving, as well as the Tigers. It's gonna be marked at the Florida a and 38 yard line, and Savannah State is driving. And they have dominated this game as far as possession time. Uh, their offense has been able to stay on the field a little bit longer. And here, they're gonna try and do it again, Gibbons. Is eight up in the backfield that time, though, by number 91. That'll be Josh Crutchfield. He has a sack on the year coming into the game. And he had a solid week out last, last week against Jackson State. They didn't pull out the win, but he had a few big plays here and there. Savannah State. Second down, 12 yards to go. Split backfield. As Gibbons is back to pass, and he eludes the rush. And that time, Elijah stepping up to make the play for the Rattlers, number 15. Uh, may have been in the QB spies, QB zone type thing. Uh, all the linebackers were pretty prepared for that run, though. Third down, six yards to go, Savannah State. Gibbons drops back, lets it fly. And that was almost intercepted, but batted away by the Rattler defensive back there. Have some stoppage on the field right now. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Jalen Douse breaking up the pass there. And stopping the potential touchdown. William Chandler back to punt for Savannah State. And the Tigers had an impressive drive going. But they'll turn the ball over to Florida a and and this has kind of been the story of the Rattler defense. They step up when they have to uh, as the, the punt 
goes into the end zone. Uh, they make the big plays where they have to and give their offense an opportunity to step up and put them in the game. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching me at football on ESPN3. Back to Bragg Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, as the Florida a &M defense holds Savannah State, and they're taking over on their 20-yard line. Stanley back to pass, finds a receiver over the middle for about a 13-yard gain. Nice pass on that play by Stanley to Xavier Smith. Xavier Smith looking to play his way to a second rookie of the week in a row. And uh, trying to shine. Speaking of shining, uh, it may have caught your eye. Florida A&M University football is fully joined the 21st century with the installation of the latest thing in artificial grass. Uh, this means it's prepared for all sort of weather, short of hurricanes, and the precision footwork of the world-famous Marching 100 Band. First down and 10 yards to go. Florida A&M, the give is to the running back who is met by a host of Tigers, that was Bishop Bonnet for the Rattlers, stopped and actually lost a couple of yards on the play. And as hard as he was fighting, uh, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage there. You have to see more of an effort from his big guys in front. On the tackle of Stephon Banks, an all MEAC defensive end out of Columbus, Ohio. Second down and 14 to go for Florida A&M. The ball is marked on their 29-yard line. Stanley surveys the defense. Stanley back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, he's going deep, and the ball was intended for Xavier Smith. He was defended by John Wilson and Isaiah Bennett. Just gotten away out there. Uh, not too much, not enough for the referee to call the interference flag. Um, and uh, they'll go back and line it up again for third and long. Big play time for the Rattlers. Ball is marked on their 30 yard line. Third down, 14 yards to go. 10 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Keep an eye on Marcus Williams, far side of the field, out there by himself. Stanley completes to his tight end, and it's not going to be enough. And right there near the first down marker was Marcus Williams, and he was open on uh, what looked like a hitch or a curl route. Yeah, I wonder if Stanley just missed him there. Fourth down for Florida a and We're here at Bragg Stadium with 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Savannah State 7, Florida a and zero. 0. That to kick for Florida A&M is Chris Fadil. He's somewhat of an impact player for this team, it seems, Melvin. The ball is going to be fair caught by Jamichael Baldwin. And good, and the, I'm sorry, Melvin, good coverage there by the Rattlers as well. And a good punt by Fadil. going to put them at the 16, almost 17. And that's where the Tigers will start this drive. The Tigers have been alternating quarterbacks throughout the game. And it looks like they may have Bell back in the game. And he completes out to his receiver for about a six-yard gain. And that's an easy throw and catch out there. Good block by the receiver. Uh, very important block by that receiver as well, and it allows the other receiver to pick up about six to seven yards. Looks like the reception was completed to DeAndre Reed. Second down. Five to go. Savannah State. And they've been playing well. The keeper by Bell is up the middle. He finds some room, and he sprints out over to the 35-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go, Tigers. So what I thought earlier may not be the case. Uh, T.J. Bell definitely looks like not only can he run, but he has vision there. 
uh, finds his blockers in open space and picks up the first down. And the fans here at Bragg Stadium are a bit concerned and quiet. With seven points on the board for the opponent, or for the opponent, there's not much to say. And uh, the Rattlers are just hoping and praying it doesn't end up like last week. Gibbons pass is batted up, and it may have been picked off by Florida a and and it was. The ball is picked off. Chris Scott. Oh, no, excuse me. Ismail Abdul Kawi, 5'11", 188-pound sophomore out of Loganville, Georgia, stepping up and making a play off the tip pass there. Much needed big play for the Florida a and defense as Savannah State has been controlling the ball most of the evening. Florida a and will take over. Ball is marked at the 42-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. FAMU. And with FAMU already having a turnover of, of their own, that helps to even out the playing field. Stanley. Stanley back to pass. He's looking. He's looking. He's got a man. Marcus Williams on a great play there. And it's knocked away at the last moment there by Terrence McCray. Use the speed to catch up to Marcus Williams and makes a play at the last second, saving the touchdown. Second down, 10 yards to go. Florida A&M, ball marked on the Savannah State 41-yard line. Eight minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Savannah State 7, Florida A&M 0. My eyes are on the Zende Ray on this play. And the give... Shouldn't Up the been. middle is to Han Supre, and he breaks a tackle and comes back across the field, and he's going to be brought down at about the 37-yard line. But we have a penalty marker on the play. Great run. That's the effort that coaches kind of want to see from their running back. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, they're a great effort. Let's see if it was worth it. Well, holding is to call against Florida A&M, and the penalties continue to add up for Florida A&M, and it will nullify an exciting run, although it was only about a six-yard run. Oh, but that six-yard run uh, would have set them up at third and about six. Now they're looking at second and about 17. Ball is marked on the Florida A&M 49-yard line. Second and a time to go for Florida and the screen is complete to Chad Hunter, who is going to be met there quickly by a host of Tigers. And it's going to bring up third and about 19 for Florida a and Good idea. Scheme just didn't work there. Defense was prepared for it. Um, let's see what they have here on third and forever. Stanley is your quarterback. Third down, 19. Florida AM down seven to nothing to Savannah State. And the give up the middle is to Hans Supre. And he finds a little bit of running room, but surprisingly, not much. It's gonna bring up fourth down for the Raptors. He cut about three or four corners there, it seemed, and none of them was the one that he needed. Defense only allows him about four yards there. And the punting unit will come out yet again for the, for the Rattlers. What a Florida and m MVP right now is Chris Fadul, their punter. That's not something you really want to hear if you're Coach Simmons. Uh, but he has done a good job of pinning them inside uh, their own 20-yard line. Looks like he'll do the same here. Bad bounce. Uh, and it's a touchback. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching me at football on ESPN. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Jack uh, Savannah State has a seven to none lead as the Tigers take over on first down. And the Rattlers are beginning to struggle with uh, the same thing they struggled with last last week as well, Melvin. And that's penalties and 
offensive and defensive mistakes against their own self. No gain on the play for the Tigers. Brings up second down and about 10 yards to go. Ball is being placed right there at about the 21-yard line for Savannah State. And things have been looking really good for the Tigers today. Some shifting in the defensive line. Let's see if they try and stuff the run. And that's exactly what comes. And a great way to step up there from the cornerback. That's Terry Jefferson, number one. Redshirt Jr. Only 5'9", 175 pounds, sticking his nose in there and swallowing up Gibbons before he gets a big or uh, any momentum. And the quarterback shuffle continues for Savannah State. That carry was by Devon Gibbons at 6'2", 205 pounds sophomore. But don't let it fool you, folks. Uh, T.J. Bell can do some running, running of his own. Third down, six yards to go. Savannah State. Drop back. Right back, back, and he's going to throw that one to the bench. He's going to bring up fourth down for the Tigers as they get set to kick to Florida a and out. And Melvin, last time, uh, or earlier in the game, rather, uh, a kick by the by Savannah State was almost blocked. Uh, seeing that the Rattler offense is having a hard time keeping a consistent uh, game going, I'm going to see if the Rattlers try and sneak a, a all-out blitz for this uh, play here. Everyone's William Chandler is set to punt the ball for Savannah State, and it's blocked. Great call. <laughs> blocked by Florida a and and the ball is going to be dead on the 25-yard line. Great call, Avanza. Yes, sir. I just had a feeling everybody was lined up. Uh, everyone was ready to have that quickness in their step. And uh, right there, a blocker just didn't pick up. And number four for the Rattlers, Jalen Douse again uh, got there to make the play. So Florida A&M set up in good field position. Ball is marked on the 25-yard line of Savannah State. And again, the Rattlers needed a big play, and they got a big play. And that is the energy uh, that the Rattler fans have been waiting to enter back in. Uh, smiles on some faces. Looks like there may have been a penalty on the plate against Florida a and &M. They are marking the ball on the 40-yard line, which looked like a 15-yard markoff against Florida a and &M. So on the turnover, Fonzo, they'll start at the 40 as opposed to the 25. With every win, there comes a loss, it seems. Uh, so the... the the ultimate win is that they're still on their opponent's side of the field. Uh, they still have momentum in their hands right here. They just have to punch it in or, or get a field goal on the board, just some sort of points for the fans to see. Florida a and has struggled today on offense. Stanley is your quarterback. First down, 10 yards to go. Rattlers. And the give. Smith. Mr. Smith cuts the corner. Nice. On the wide receiver reverse. He barely made it there. That was pure speed there by Xavier Smith. Whisked by just in the brink of time and picks up about six. Second down, four yards to go. Florida AM ball marked on the 34 yard line of Savannah State. Rattlers looking for their first score on the evening. Give it's up the middle to Bowers who finds some pay work. He's still running and he's down to about the 10 yard line on an impressive run by Devin Bowers. Nice fake to Ray. Ray has been well, relatively quiet uh, after just one handoff earlier this game. And Bowers, it just opened up the field for him there. Rattlers, no huddle offense set. And the passes to Marcus Williams who breaks a couple of tackles. He's looking across the middle and he's going to be brought down after about a three yard game and the Rattlers all of a sudden have energy. And that's the 
the difference that momentum can make. That block point, that block punt was way more than just a block punt to this team, to the stadium. And if they can find a way to capitalize here, it could change the outcome of this game. Florida A&M driving. They should have a second down, about four yards to go. And the give this time is the Bowers is going to be met by De Stephon Banks. Big play by this linebacker, all MEAC defensive end out of Columbus, Ohio. Good push there by the defensive line. Makes it that much easier for the linebackers to get to where they need to be. And Bowers, uh, though he's shifty, not quick enough to cut back there. Dropped in the back there. Third down, nine to go. Florida a and They need to get to the three-yard line. Four rushers for the Tigers. And Stanley looks to make some adjustments. The referee Haas to action as Willie Simmons saw something in the offense that he did not like, and the Rattlers called timeout and probably should at this particular point. This is a crucial drive for Florida and App. However much time they need to, to take uh, to make sure that they capitalize is what they need to do. And Willie Simmons, after last week, is going to make sure that he makes every effort to make sure they make a smart decision here in the red zone. So the Rattlers are starting on this drive after an impressive block, one that you call there. When you get that shift in momentum, when you get that block punt, it's tremendous when you say that you're looking. We're going to go down on the field to Deja Martin. Bragg Stadium Rattlers facing a third down and nine yards to go on a big play as Stanley looks he finds his receiver out there and he's not going to be able to make the first down and Florida a and is probably going to have to go for a field goal right now and that's another great play by Chris Mateo fourth down Florida a and m it's gonna set up. I'm sorry, Malik Simmons was the linebacker on that play. Yahi Ali looks like he's gonna be attempting about a 28 yard field goal right now. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. And Florida AM closes as we have a score of seven to three as Yahi Ali brings the Rattlers to within four. Two minutes and eight seconds remaining in the second quarter. Florida a and gets their first score in the afternoon after getting the ball on a block punt. And we have a seven to three score here in Tallahassee and the fans are starting to get into it. Uh, you, you get some points on the board. Uh, like I said, it didn't have to be a touchdown there. That was definitely the preferred uh, outcome. But any points shows that this team is still trying. They're still in the game. And at the pace that the Tiger offense is going, if the Rattlers can string another possession along or two, they could definitely come out with the win. Earlier, the Rattlers honored the 1998 White College National Championship team, a team that was coached by Billy Joe and led on offense by Patrick Bonner, an impressive group of young men. As we kick off, and it's fielded on the one, taken back the other way by the Tigers, splitting the, and fumbles, gets it back, keeps going. And finally out. And then a flag thrown. That's going to be a late hit on the Rattlers. And who was Jim that? Michael Baldwin, a big-time returner for the Tigers. And something rare. He dropped the ball. It came right back up. But nice run by the young man. And then terrible 
I couldn't tell. Well, I couldn't tell if the rattler was falling towards the end right there. Maybe that's what the, the the officials are discussing. And it doesn't look like Willie Simmons is happy with the call either. Um, so let's see what they what conclusion they come to. So the referees are huddled right now. Willie Simmons seems to be extremely upset on the call as we're trying to figure out what the penalty mark was all about. Florida A&M just closed the score to four as the score is seven to three with one minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And they're still discussing and while they're doing that, let me tell you a little bit about Coach Will, uh, Willie Simmons. He's from this area uh, right down the street, Quincy, Florida. Uh, Shanks High School uh, before he embarked on his So there was a holding call on the Tigers, but and a roughing. So a series of penalties there on the play, two by the Tigers, one by the Rattlers, and the Tigers will essentially start at about their eight yard line. And this one works in the favor of the Rattlers. Um, it did look like the defender was falling out of bounds towards the end of that play anyway. Um, but this, this is going to start on about the seven yard line of the Tigers and the defense has stood up thus far in the game. Let's see if they can do it again. So Savannah State will take over on the seven yard line. They're deep in their territory the quarterback they've been shuffling today is T.J. Bell. Man in motion. And the give is up the middle to Jalen McLeod. He'll plow ahead for about three yards on the play. And he moves the line forward. The goal there is not to have a big game, just give you a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, you're up there so close against the end zone, you have no room for error. And that's a play that helps that out. One minute and 35 seconds remaining. What do you think the Tiger strategy is at this point? At this point, I'm, I think we're going to see a strike if uh, we don't see a big run here soon um, to put them in field goal position and gain at least a, a touchdown lead. The give again is to McLeod, who's it's met by a host of Rattlers in there. Looks like Jalene Douse as well as Antonio Miller were there on the stop for Florida A&M. There is a timeout that's being taken by Florida A&M. Tigers are looking at a third down and seven yards to go. We have one minute and nine seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Savannah State seven, Florida A&M three. And I'll tell you, Afonso, Florida A&M has been really struggling to score on offense, but the block punt seemed to re-energize life in the Rattlers. They get the field goal, and right now their goal is to get this ball back with one minute and nine seconds remaining. And this is the exact opposite of what happened last week as far as uh, clock management. Uh, granted, that was at the end of the game. This is at halftime. Uh, but nonetheless, very important for the outcome of this game. Uh, if the Rattlers do, in fact, come up with a stop here, it could potentially mean putting more points on the board uh, before going into halftime and getting the ball again after that. Third down, six yards to go. Tigers, ball marked on the 13-yard line. Couple of Rattlers jump in there. We have a penalty marker on the play. Rattler players are pointing towards Savannah State. And they are clapping right now. And it looks like it's going to be against the Tigers, which is going to make their challenge a little bit more difficult. And now we have some undisciplined play on the behalf of uh, Savannah State. That's not going to help them. 
Ball marked on the six yard line. It's gonna bring up third and about 11 yards to go for the Tigers. One minute and nine seconds remaining and another penalty marker is down on the field. This time, the penalty is against the Rattler, so the five yards that they just gained on a penalty is now back in the advantage of Savannah State. One step forward, two steps back. Ladies and gentlemen, when we go to break, don't go anywhere. We'll have DJ coming up with Coach Rayburn uh, before the break, uh, before the half, rather. Third down, six yards to go. Bell back, has a man deep, and he drops the ball. And that's that, Sneed? Yeah, DeAndre Sneed. That ball hit him in a bad place right in the hand. My receiver, yeah. My receiver coach from high school used to say the worst place to hit a man is in his hands. Uh, right there, right in the bread basket, wonderfully thrown pass. Uh, exposed the defender on that uh, on that play, did the quarterback, but not able to haul it in. Brings up fourth down for Savannah State, who leads seven to three over Florida A&M. William Chandler is back, as it appears that Florida A&M. It's a box area warning for the players, media. Okay. Down there for the sideline, people. Savannah State calls time out on the play. Not sure what they're thinking is. They're looking at a fourth down and about seven yards to go. There are a lot of people on the Florida A&M sideline right now. And apparently a couple of the people got over the line and they got a warning. So the referees are talking with Willie Simmons right now, and they're trying to sort out just a ton of things going on right now. But the theme this year so far for the Rattlers is a ton of penalties, and they're going to really have to clean that up if they're going to move forward. Good news is it's only halftime in this game, and I'm pretty sure that Willie Simmons is going to do his – or contribute his best effort in, in getting that message across to his guys. Hey, we are beating ourselves. And once they get that, uh, they can play a completely different ball game in the second half. William Chandler is in his end zone, and he's set to punt the ball, and he not a good punt. It was tipped again. And the ball is going to be rolling dead right at midfield. And the Rattlers will take over there. 50 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Savannah State 7, Florida A&M 3. And this special team of uh, the Rattlers today is giving the Tigers problems. Uh, that is the third kick that was altered uh, by, uh, by a guy going for it. So the Rattlers are going to have to come up with an express offense right now with 50 seconds left in the half. If they play the sidelines right um, and just get into field position, worst case scenario, uh, they can put some points on the board. Stanley back to Plass. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking, and he goes deep. And the ball is intercepted, intercepted on the play by John Wilson. And he just looked like a receiver pretty much there. Went up and took it away. Got the ball at the highest point. That's what you want to see in. What's tough for the Rattler fans is that he had a guy open once again around that first down area. Just one of those throws that Stanley's going to wish he has back. So a turnover has led to Savannah State getting the ball back. The ball is going to be marked on their 14-yard line. 41 seconds remaining in the half. 
big interception by John Wilson of Savannah State. As the Rattlers have yet another draft drive stopped by the Tigers. Penalty marker on the field. Delay of game is going to be called against Savannah State. And they're probably just going to kneel this and get into the half. Damn, you only has one timeout left, so they won't be able to stop this from happening. So we'll go ahead and get ready to go down to the field. And it's a bit of a hold up on the field. Referees again to try attempting to figure something out. They're requesting that the game clock operator place 32 seconds on the scoreboard. Savannah State will pick up and they're going to mark the ball down on about the six yard line for Savannah State. 32 seconds left in the half. Savannah State takes over the ball after a nice interception and it appears that the half has come to an end. We have Deja Martin standing by right now as we'll go to the field. Deja. She's set to talk with the head coach of Savannah State. All right, thank you guys so much. This is Deja Martin here with head coach Rayburn. Coach, what are you going to tell your teammates or your players in the locker room when they come out for the second half? Well, we got to be uh, more consistent on offense. We've let, uh, we've let a couple plays go um, that we missed. And, uh, and then special teams, you know, we're playing poorly on special teams. Lots of penalties, the block punt. Uh, so got to do better uh, uh, in that regard. But uh, uh, I thought we were playing great effort and uh, defense keeping us in it. Well, you have earned a four-point lead, so what are you going to do to maintain this lead and even broaden it? Well, hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll be uh, more consistent on offense, uh, do a little better job in the passing game, and then uh, we've got to clean up the special team for sure. All right, thank you so much, Coach. That's all for now. Back to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Deja. And the Savannah State coach has to feel real good coming into Tallahassee. They get their first points on the season. They leap 7-3 to three going into halftime, and we're going to take – a timeout now as we are entering halftime. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. What's inside? Possibilities. What we deliver <laughs> by delivering. You always show up for your team, even if they don't. Hampton by Hilton. State holds a 7-3 lead over Florida A&M and Afonso. Savannah State looked very good in the first half. What they needed to do was play a clean game, uh, what we were talking about before, uh, seeing that the history of FAMU is to have a few penalties uh, as of last week and the week before. Uh, and thus far, they've done that. They've had a few hiccups here and there that the, co the coach talked about right before halftime. Uh, but besides that, if they keep playing like that uh, and they put up the same performance they put up in the first half, they'll come out with the win. Now, Florida A&M benefited from a block punt that seemed to start the momentum in the Rattlers' direction. Definitely. The, the, special teams has, the special teams has just been showing up for the Rattlers all day, all night. Um, on that last one, number four, I can't remember the name of him, but uh, he got there 
right in the nick of time, uh, put the Rattlers in a wonderful position to tie the game back up or even take the lead, and that's what they needed at that time. For Savannah State, it's golden. They got their first touchdown on the year after losing to two FBS opponents. So they're looking real good right now. What do you expect to see from Savannah State in the second half? It depends on the most motivational speech that their coach gives them over this halftime uh, because they have the – they're in a position to control their own destiny in a sense. Uh, whether you guys turn around the season right here or later on, it's, it's up to you. So we're here at Bragg Stadium at halftime, and Savannah State has a 7-3 to three lead over Florida A&M. In the background, you hear the Savannah State band, and it's always a halftime contest mm -hmm. going on in addition to the definitely, football game. Definitely. We are going to be back in a moment. You're one Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium. You're watching the MEAC Digital Broadcast Network here on ESPN3. We have a, a seven to three halftime score, Savannah State and Florida A&M. And as we stated earlier, Savannah State struggled a lot coming into this game, but they've looked really good. Uh, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they faced some tough competition in the same situation where uh, Florida a and went up against Troy. Uh, the final score wasn't as pretty as we would have wanted it to be, uh, but they, they played a hard-fought game and they learned from it, uh, just as uh, Savannah State apparently has uh, because they're up 7-3 to three right now. Florida a and has definitely not played their best game right now, but they got a block punt late in the second quarter that seemed to change the momentum for the Rattlers. Definitely, both coaches at this point are, are feeling pretty confident about what they have going on. You've played a sloppy game, and you're still very much so into it. So we just have to sit back and see what happens. Another thing that's going on for Savannah State right now, it's their last year participating in the MEAC. They're going to move down next year to Division II, and you got to know they want to make a statement here today. Definitely for, for their recruiting system um, and just a statement as to what they stand for and who they compete with actually uh, is going in, onto their whole program tonight. And the other thing that Savannah State has been doing tonight is using two quarterbacks, which seem to confuse the Rattler defense a little bit. Definitely. We see how it worked out for Alabama uh, slightly, and uh, we're seeing a little bit of it tonight as well. You're watching me at football on ESPN3. We'll be back in a moment. Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M, and I'm joined by the legendary coach Billy Joe, who's the coach of that 1998 team we talked about. Coach Joe, first of all, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Good to be here, and good to see you again. It's been many years. It has been many yes. years. Talk a little bit about what was so special about that team. Well, what was special about the 1998 team is that we had all the qualities of a championship team. We had speed, size, we were smart, uh, we had a nice little scheme, and the guys were mature, much older fellas, uh, and uh, we were confident. Uh, running the Gulf Coast offense fit our personnel beautifully, and as a result, we had an outstanding season. Coach, talk a little bit about that Gulf Coast offense, if you will. They're using that over at Florida State right now, but really, its essence is starting with you. Oh, yes. Uh, we created the, uh, the Gulf Coast offense. I created it. Uh, I wanted to name it the Big Ben offense, <laughs> but that didn't have enough national appeal. So uh, I called it the, the Gulf Coast offense after the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, of course, that caught on. And I'd love to see hundreds, if not thousands, of schools and colleges run the Gulf Coast offense, just like the West Coast offense that uh, Bill Walsh created. A lot of people are running his offense, and I'm happy that a lot of people are running uh, my offense. And, of course, they're running it right next door, and I think that's a great thing. Well, it's an excellent opportunity right now to tell us a little bit about the core of that offense and what it tries to accomplish. What is it about the Gulf Coast offense that's so explosive? Well, what's uh, exciting about the Gulf Coast offense is that uh, our mission is to create horizontal stretch and vertical stretch, deploy our personnel from sideline to sideline, and get that vertical stretch by throwing deep. 
and then work back down. Now, what makes uh, the Gulf Coast offense really special that no one else runs? They run a variation of the Gulf Coast offense. But what makes our Gulf Coast offense special is that I train the quarterbacks to call from end zone to end zone, sideline to sideline, and whistle to whistle. And uh, that way we can move fast down the field, get the defense tired. Uh, they can only use uh, elementary front and uh, elementary secondary. And as a result, the quarterback sits back in a rocking chair and just picks them apart. Well, we are so elated to have head coach Billy Joe returning here to Bragg Memorial Stadium. They put up some big numbers back in the time, and he's also a college Hall of Famer. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. Discovery and get an extended look at the new season on Discovery Go. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Florida A&M where the Savannah State Tigers hold a 7-3 to three lead over Florida A&M as they're about set to kick off the ball in a surprising, somewhat surprising first half for Florida A&M. Yes, both, both teams have struggled thus far. Uh, let's see if they can keep their acts clean, get them together, and uh, have a more efficient second half. Giovanni Lugo kicks off the ball, and it's received by Rattler, who finds a little bit of daylight. And Florida A&M is going to start their first drive of the second half from the 27-yard line. Can you even think about what Coach Simmons may have said at the half? Uh, a lot of it could probably probably be lost in translation Melvin uh, and I'm not going to try to be that translator uh, but outside of that he wants to see hard effort and discipline from his guys um, emphasis on discipline if they just clean up these flags similar to last week they're in a way better position it appears that there's a penalty mark on cue down on the field and they're probably going to re-kick the ball right now. We're at halftime. I mean, we're in the third quarter, 14 minutes and 55 seconds remaining. And they're going to re-kick the ball, Savannah State, after a penalty marker was thrown. And Florida a and will have the first possession of the second half. Marcus Williams and Xavier Smith back to receive for the Rattlers. And Giovanni Lugo will kick off the ball for Savannah State. And the kick is gathered by Williams. He's at his 20. And he finds a little bit of running room and is driven out on the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up first down and 10 yards to go for the Rattlers from there. So that penalty benefited the Rattlers for about five yards there, and they'll set up shot, looking to get something going. And the Rattler crowd here at Bragg Stadium has been very quiet. It's a crowd that has been known to have a lot of energy, but a little bit disappointed, I guess, in the outcome of the game right now. The Rattlers have to give them something to cheer about. Struggling in both the passing and rushing game. That's why they're so quiet. Uh, barely over uh, 50 yards in either category. And it, it's taking the toll on the stadium. Easy throw and catch right there, though. Stanley to Chad Hunter, a name we haven't called a whole lot tonight. But that is uh, two really good players for Florida A&M. Chad Hunter is an all-MEAC wide receiver from here in Tallahassee. He's also a key returner of this offense. Stanley out to Xavier Smith at about the 37-yard line. And they're going to be set up for a third and two yards to go. And the ball is going to be marked at the Florida a and 39-yard line. But back to Chad Hunter, back to Chad Hunter uh, really quickly. He had 32 receptions, 598 yards, six touchdowns 
on last season is. The give is up the middle to Bowers, who gets the first down after running for about five yards and sets the Rattlers up at the 40. Three yard line. And nice run up the middle by Bowers. Nice run. He definitely rattled himself there. Rumbled, uh, but made it past that first down marker. First down, 10 yards to go. Florida and m Ball marked on the 44 yard line. Three backs in the backfield. Stanley back. He's looking. He's looking across the middle. Intended for Marcus Williams. And a flag comes in late against the Savannah State secondary, and the Rattlers are going to advance the ball via penalty. And there is Daryl Bonner as uh, they play it back there. Stanley over the middle and then hit right before the ball gets there by Daryl Bonner. He's going to set the Rattlers up at the Savannah State 41-yard line. We have 13 minutes and 19 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Savannah State 7, Florida A&M 3. Rattlers first down and 10 yards to go. Blitz coming from Bonner. Picked and he's going to have to get her sacked. Sacked on the play. Big play for Savannah State. And Devin Bowers is on the ground as Bonner stood over him and looked to be taunting for a second there. And we'll take a time out on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, where Savannah State has a 7-3 lead over Florida A&M. Big sack for the Tigers. Stanley back to pass. He's looking deep and got a man open at about the 21-yard line. Big play for the Rattlers. Way on the other side of the field, I believe that's Marcus Williams. It is, as he just found open field and looked back at Stanley. Big game for the Rattlers. First down, 10 yards to go. Florida A&M driving. The give is up the middle. It looks like it's Han Supre as he stacked up around the 20-yard line. That's going to bring up a second and 10 yards to go for Florida A&M. Great push there, and watch this pace start to mess with this defense there. Uh, Willie Simmons, I think, is taking notice that this defense wasn't even set on that play. Second down. And about eight yards to go. Florida A&M. Stanley back to pass. Finds a man, and it's incomplete. Over the middle. It's going to bring up third down for the Rattlers. And we'll go down to the field right now as Deja Martin has a report on the injury of Devin Byers. All right, thank you, gentlemen, so much. The good news is he did come off the field on his own two feet, a little shaky, but good nonetheless. He's talking to doctors, very cognizant of what's going on. It looks like they're testing him for a concussion. Right now all they can do is get him some medication for the headache and see if he can keep going. Back to you guys. Thanks, Deja, and I guess that's good news for uh, Mr. Bowers because he got up and walked off the field. Rattlers are now looking to score. Stanley back to pass. He's rushing. He's rushing. And he's just going to run out of bounds at around the 30-yard line at this point. Great defensive pressure there by the front four of the Tigers. And Stanley had nowhere to go. Defensive backs were all on their assignments. But going back to the Bowers injury, that is a key part of this uh, three running back system that w Willie Simmons uh, runs with Xavier Smith, uh, Bishop Bonnet, and Devin Bowers. And uh, we'll be anxious to see if he'll be able to get back in action. Third down for the Rattlers and about 17 to go. Stanley is back being pressured and he's going to be hit. He drops the ball. And the ball is recovered 
by the Rattlers. There is Lubens. Yes, Lubens Polonisi. And he is a returning lineman for the Rattlers, showing some experience there. He does, however, get up hobbling. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Disappointing end to a promising drive for Florida A&M as they'll bring on Chris Fodor to punt the ball. It's spotted at the 44-yard line of Savannah State. Back deep for the Tigers is Jermichael Baldwin. And he elects to take a fair catch at about the 13-yard line. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. 100% phenomenal. Get the fastest speeds available for the best price with the Fios Gigabit Connection. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Florida a and where the Tigers of Savannah State hold a 7-3 lead. And the Tigers just ran their first play after halting a Rattler drive, a promising Rattler drive. The give was to Jalen Williams, who gained two yards, second down, eight yards to go, Savannah State. Crutchfield around the four uh, that made that stop. And we have another penalty marker out on the field around the 14-yard line. They're going to assess the Rattlers five yards for being offside. That's going to bring up a second down and about four yards to go for Savannah State. And we have Gibbons in the quarterback position for the Tigers right now. And he keeps it and he's wide open in the middle. He's found a hole and they're going to bring him down around the 42-yard line, an impressive run by this 6'2", 205-pound sophomore. Spins his way. He just looks graceful out there running. Savannah State is employing both of their quarterbacks. Gibbons seems to be the runner of the two, and they are moving their quarterbacks in and out. It seems to be costing the Rattlers some problems. Gibbons is your quarterback. First down, 10 yards to go, Savannah State. And the Gibbons is back. He's showing his arm, and he's looking, he's looking, and the ball is incomplete on the play as he tried to find Baldwin. <laughs> and just couldn't get the ball there way short by the time the receiver realized it. He couldn't make the adjustment, uh, but... The defensive back has to get his head around there as well um, because it, it was very much so almost a completion. Second down, 10 yards to go. Savannah State, ball marked on the 41-yard line. Motion man. The give is up the middle to Jalen Williams. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Stingy Rattler front four right there. Second down, 10 yards to go for Savannah State. Ball marked on the 41-yard line as the Tigers have come into Tallahassee and scored their first touchdown on the year after being shut out by two FBS opponents. I'm There's pretty, movement along the line, and another right, penalty right. marker is down on the field. And we'll let the referees sort this out. Looks to be some confusion around the line. Not really sure which team this would be attributed to. Penalty appears to be going against Savannah State, which is going to set them up at about the 36-yard line. 
The quarterback in play for Savannah State is Devon Gibbons. Third and 15. Gibbons back to pass. He looks. He unloads to the sideline. Incomplete. Ball intended for DeAndre Sneed. And the Tigers will turn the ball over on down. And the Rattlers did a great job there of forming a line at the first down uh, marker. And uh, if they completed a pass in front of it, they could have, but it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have been enough to convert. Um, and so we'll see the punting team come out for the Tigers and see if we'll see another electrifying play on behalf of the Rattlers special team. William Chandler is set to punt for Savannah State. Marcus Wiggins is standing at about his 35-yard line. And this kick, he collects at about the 20, makes a move. He's at the 25 to the 30 and driven out of bound there by Savannah State. And that's uh, another key returnee right there, Orlando McKinley, uh, number 10 for the Rattlers. Switch to Sprint today and you can get the new iPhone XS for just $0 per month from Sprint. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida. Savannah State 7, Florida A&M 3. Rattlers taking over, getting ready to start at about the 20-yard line. Stanley is your quarterback. He's back to pass, being pressured, being pressured, and he gets rid of the ball at the last minute. But a tremendous blitz led in there by Malik and Malik Simmons and the rest of this Tiger defense has done a great job of doing just that, uh, putting pressure on Ryan Stanley and forcing him to. Second down, 10 yards to go, Florida A&M. Ball marked on the 20-yard line. Eight minutes and three seconds left here in the third quarter. Savannah State, seven, Florida A&M, three. Stanley back and finds a man over the middle. It's Marcus Williams, who's going to be brought down at about the 32-yard line. That's Xavier Smith on the reception. Uh, that's enough to pick up the first, and that's three straight throws. Uh, Willie Simmons showing some confidence in his quarterback after throwing uh, two interceptions in this game already. First down, 10 yards to go. Rattlers, the ball is given. Up the middle, and it looks like it may be Hans Sapre. Wrapped up behind the line. Bishop Bonnet can't get anywhere to go. And if those little legs get it going, uh, we know they can take him somewhere. Second down, 12 yards to go. Florida AM. Ball is marked on the 30 yard line. As Willie Simmons calling an audible from the sideline, and now Bonnet goes in motion. And the completion is made across the middle, and the receiver is running, and he is going to score for Florida a &M. Big play that the Rattlers have been looking for all night. If those little legs get going, Melvin, they can take him somewhere. And that time, it was straight to the end zone for a Rattler touchdown. Florida a &M with their first touchdown on the night. A big play connection from Stanley. And that's enough to take the lead right here. They can push it to three points and push it to a field goal difference. Bishop Bonnet across the middle. And that looked like that may have gone for over 60 yards, Alfonso. No one was going to catch him. Once he gets in the open space, we saw it last week against Jackson State. That guy, he may be small, but he has some burning. So Florida A&M takes their first lead on the night, 10 to 7 with 6 minutes and 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Rattler fans reignited and striking here at Bragg Stadium 
as Bishop Bonnet has just brought these Rattlers to their feet. And with the sound of that cannon, that gets the, the, the alumni back into it, that gets the students back into it, uh, that gets the marching 100 a reason uh, to let loose. This whole, the whole atmosphere of this entire game could change right here with the stop from the Rattler defense. Rattlers take a 10 to seven lead, six minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter after an electrifying completion from Stanley to Bishop Bonnet that covered well over 60 yards. The band is playing, the fans are swinging and striking, and Florida and is Bragg Memorial Stadium has come to life. And this is what you want to see as a football player. Uh, there's cameras all over the field in the crowd, and they see uh, what they just created there with that school. The kickoff is made, and the Savannah State players hit at about the 15-yard line. Penalty markers are all over the field right now. And Abonzo, it's a really interesting scenario. We are seeing a tremendous amount of flags on the field during these Florida a and games. Coach Willie Simmons alluded to those flags earlier this week in the press conference, and he talked about fundamentals. Talk to me a little bit about fundamentals and their relation to penalties. Fundamentals and their relations to, well, that's the reason that there's a penalty in the first place. Uh, when guys get away from their fundamentals, uh, it's, it's typical when guys are leaning more so on their talent, and that's what's gotten them on this stage from high school, just leaning more so on their talent than anything. But hey, uh, you're, you're in a situation here to where guys are just as good as you are, so you have to bring fundamentals and your talent to the table. If not, then it's going to result in penalties, it's going to result in turnovers. So how will the Tigers respond as the give is up the middle to Jalen McLeod and he gains about two yards where he's met in the middle of the FAMU defense as he is really doing a good job right now stacking up against the Savannah State offense. Usually in the red zone, this defense is a different beast. Uh, they did allow a bigger play on the other side of the field earlier in the game, but for the most part, for the most part, uh, when they have teams in the red zone, they, they can hold them. So Savannah State has got a second down and eight yards to go. And the give is going to be fumble. a keeper, and it looks like a fumble at around the eight-yard line. I do think they got it back. But that'll set up a third in about 10 situation. Third down, nine yards to go. Savannah State after two really good plays by the Florida A&M defense. Five minutes, 26 seconds remaining. In the third quarter, Florida AM 10, Savannah State 7. Third and nine. The Gibbons. ball is complete from Gibbons. And drilled down there by Terry Jefferson. Big play on the other side of the field earlier this game. The red shirt junior steps up and again makes a play for the Rattlers. Now, here we are. Tigers are punting from their own end zone again. And special teams has been giving them problems all night. So I'm going to switch it up here a little bit, Melvin. What do you think is going to happen right here? It's going to be interesting. I think that the Rattlers are in a position right now where they want to go ahead and return this punt. They don't want to take a chance on roughing the punter right now. But, again, the Rattlers special teams has played well tonight, and this is an opportune time to block a punt. It is a poor punt back that goes out of bounds at about the 38-yard line on the play. And based on that spot, it's very generous, and that's going to be inside the 30 of the Tigers at about the 28. Yes, they're going to mark it at the 20, and he's still walking. It's going to be at the 28-yard line. 
of Savannah State. Well, Florida in and will take over. The Rattlers on a big play. Their last possession from Stanley to Bishop Barnett, covering over 60 yards for a touchdown. Florida A&M's first touchdown on the night. First down, 10 yards to go, FAMU. And there, maybe the pressure uh, got there uh, to affect how the, oh, nice move there by Xavier Smith. <laughs> Pass is complete from Stanley. And the Venom is moving here in Bragg Memorial Stadium as the Rattlers are driving. Nice play by Smith right here. And he lost his footing. He did. He tap danced on that sideline trying to stay in and everything, but he definitely got the defender with the move. Second down. Two yards to go. Florida AM to give is up the middle to Hans Sapre. He found a little pay dirt, and he's going to be brought down at about the 10-yard line as the Rattler offense is picking up momentum. And you can see right there he knows that he could have made that man miss. Right there, it could have easily been a touchdown. Uh, Tiger, good play there in the open field to bring him down. First down, go to go. Florida AM ball marked out on the nine yard line. There's a timeout on the field. You're watching me at football on ESPN3. Stadium and the Rattlers advance the ball down to the goal line on a run by Deshaun Smith. The Rattlers are threatening as they lead 10 to 7 here in Bragg Stadium. The give is up the middle. Touchdown, Florida AM. Deshaun Smith again busting in for the Rattler touchdown right there. They're going to increase the lead to 16. To seven for the moment, in just a second, they'll have the opportunity to push that to a 10 point lead. Uh, but again, the momentum is everything in this game, and it completely switched for the Rattlers here. So, Florida AM with two back to back touchdowns on their last two drives has taken a 16 to seven lead here in the third quarter with two minutes and 51 seconds left. The score is 16 to seven as we await the point after kick by Yahi Ali. Okay, so Apparently we, we had two flags out on the field for both the Tigers and uh, the Rattlers as well. So they, it appears that they're going to go ahead and attempt the point after touchdown. Those two penalties offset. Florida a and on a two-yard run by Deshaun Smith. Kick is up. Kick is good. Florida A&M extends their lead to 17 to seven with two minutes and 51 seconds left in the game. Rattler fans back into it here at Bragg Stadium as Florida A&M has looked very impressive on their last two drives. I tell you what, uh, Ali has been very efficient thus far this game. Uh, he had one block last game, which may have played into the fact or into the, the, the final play that determined it all. Uh, but this is giving Willie Simmons the, the confidence he needs in this kicker to never have to make that decision again. I would like to see him kick it from uh, some distance instead of just the PATs. Uh, but thus far, he's been efficient. Rattler fans back into it as Florida a and m increases their lead 17 to 7 at the 250 mark in the third quarter. Florida a and m leads 17 to 7. As Yahi Ali gets set to kick off the ball to the Tigers. Oh. 
by Melvin Beal here joined by Afonso Barber and the Rattlers have seized momentum. Looks like this kick is going to be returned by Jermichael Baldwin who is net at the 23 yard line by a host of Rattlers as Savannah State will try to answer. And while that play may look simple to some people, uh, that's the type of fiery individual you need in situations just like this in the game. Uh, just giving a little extra effort. He didn't even get that many yards on that return, but just that extra effort is enough to give your teammates the motivation they need to go out and potentially get back into this game. Well, the Tigers have been shuffling in and out quarterbacks. Uh, it looks like they're going to bring in Devon Gibbons. He's had a couple of big plays for the Tigers. They're going to mock the ball at about the 21-yard line as Gibbons is back, and he can't find any room, so he runs up the middle, picks up about eight yards. That's going to bring up second down and two yards to go, Savannah State. And as we uh, noticed earlier in the game, he's more so their running quarterback, but the, the fishy thing about that is he can also throw. Um, his, his first con contribution to the game actually was on the pass uh, complete to the running back. Uh, so the defense of the Rattlers is just on their feet. They don't know what to look for or who is coming from at this point. Second down, two yards to go, Savannah State. And the give is up the middle. And stop down in the backfield there. Antonio Miller read it all the way. Great job of sticking to his assignment, sticking to his assignment and not biting on the QB fake. Third down, two yards to go. Savannah stay. Ball marked on the 27-yard line as the Tigers try to answer two consecutive Florida a &M touchdowns. Gibbons gives the ball in the middle. And it's going to be close. Very close. But it will result in a first down. First down, Savannah State. As the Tigers will continue their ride to drive. Ball is marked at the 30-yard line. We have one minute and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Florida A&M 17, Savannah State 7. The pitch is out to Rashad Saxton, who has met by several Rattlers, and he's going to lose yards. Jalen Douse, as to his highlight reel of tonight, and that's also going to be holding on the Tigers. Let's see if they accept this. which it looks like they will. Referee is marking the ball at about the 21 yard line. Savannah State is going to be looking at a third and about 16. Uh, is that a first down and 20 yards to go for Savannah State. Rattler defense is really playing aggressive football right now. Flying to the ball, and right here they have to do that as well. As, well, there will be a penalty before. So let's check this out. The call is false start against Savannah State, and that's going to push the Tigers back a little bit further. It's going to bring up first and 25 for the Tigers. 23 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. We're at Bragg Memorial Stadium. Florida a and with a 17-7 lead over Savannah State, a team that shot the Rattlers early in the first quarter by taking the lead. Gibbons. Keeps the ball. He's found some pay dirt. He's out over the 30 to about. He's at the 29. And he gets back pretty much all of the penalty yards they allotted. And it's going to be around second and 11. And 
he's a weapon. He almost, he, he reminds me a bit of uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, okay. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium, where Florida a &M has a 17-7 lead over Savannah State. Rattler defense stops the Savannah drive. We're going to go down on the field of Deja Martin for a report. All right, thanks, guys. It looks like since the block punt from earlier, it has been a revitalized FAMU football team down here on the floor. Right now, defense is taking over, and it's given offense a new energy, making the score 17 to 7. And they're not slowing down. It's going to take a lot for Savannah to overcome this. Back to you guys. Thanks, Deja. As the Tigers are trying to complete now a third down, Gibbons back to pass, and the ball is going to be incomplete on the play, and the Tigers are going to turn the ball over on down. Elijah Richardson right around there as he usually is on the defensive plays and I uh, just want to point out that everything that Deja just said is spot on it's a uh, tough sledding to say the least for Savannah State especially after that uh, incomplete pass there they have to overcome a slow offense and get back in this game Chandler Williams the punter has been a busy man tonight for Savannah State and he's getting heat and another flop as the ball hits at about the 50-yard line, setting the Rattlers up with great field position. Blessings. Just, just blessings for Willie Simmons in this Rattler program. Uh, that's exactly what that was. Uh, look of amazement on the fans' faces in the stands. Like that. Rattler fans partying in the stands as the Florida a and offense has produced two touchdowns uh, this half and they're partying here at Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida. Beautiful night for football. Florida a and they're gonna mark the ball at midfield as the Rattlers get set on a first down and 10 yards to go. See if they can continue this uh, string of success they've been having. And the give is to Bonnet. And, and that's a face mask. He was stacked up. There at the end. It was a great play until the end. Wasn't intentional, but a uh, defender grabbed the face mask with Bonnet. And the Rattlers will be moving forward. So Florida and a and will take over and continue to drive at the 35-yard line. We have a 17-7 score with just under 14 minutes remaining in the game. Florida a and scored on their last two drives as they're looking at a first and 10. And that give is up the middle. Rattler running back has some room. And he's brought down at around the 16-yard line. And that looks like that's going to be a big run by Bonnet. Bonnet gets up afterwards, and he shows exactly what you want to see. A little attitude as he finds the open area, makes a move there, breaks the tackle, stays on his feet uh, for a few extra yards. And he says he's eating. Stoppage in play, another penalty marker is down on the field. And it looks like it's going to be an infraction against the Rattlers. That's gonna move them back five yards. FAMU fans having a good time here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. And that's alumni there, you know, was showing the students how it's done a little bit on the big screen. Excellent. Florida a and M driving the ball. Stanley back to pass, looks and completes the pass for about a 14-yard gain to Marcus Williams. And that's going to set up second down in about nine. Way more manageable than what they were just working with. 
Ball is marked at about the 17 yard line. Rattlers driving. Stanley. They give it up the middle to the Rattler running back who's running and he's going to be brought down and a, another flag on the play. It looks like a face mask is going to be Paul that's going to set the Rattlers up inside of the five yard line. And Bishop Bonnet once again proving if he gets a smidget of space, he's going to do something with it. And confirming what you said there, Melvin. I don't know if it's because he's a little shorter or what, but they so far on this drive, they keep grabbing that face mask. Sets the Rattlers up at about the three-yard line. As they threaten to extend their lead. Cool, calm, and collected is Stanley as he sends two men in motion to the left side. Heavy. And the give as to Azende Ray. Haven't called his name too much this game, but we know what he's capable of. And that time he picks up another touchdown for the season. Florida a and extends their lead 23 to seven over Savannah State as the Rattlers have scored on their last three possessions and they have momentum in their corner. What we were saying earlier, Melvin, about buying into the system of Willie Simmons, uh, I'm pretty sure this is what he wanted to see from the offense. The kick attempt by Yali Ali. <laughs> Extends the score to 24 to 7 here in the fourth quarter. We have a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. This to my shopping list. Okay. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida. As the Florida AM Rattlers have just extended their lead 24 to 7 over Savannah State, and Willie Simmons' offense is now hunting. And I don't think they're going to show any signs of stopping if uh, they, have, they can help it. Uh, Willie Simmons probably wants to see as much as, of this offense as he can while he can. Kick is gathered there by Baldwin, and he is met at about the 15 yard line. And that's where the Tigers will start their drive. 11 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Florida A&M has scored on their last three possessions and have extended their lead 24 to seven. Savannah State after really looking good in the first half has struggled here in the second half. Well, Melvin, if you look at it from this perspective, uh, the majority of the Rattlers' possessions have started on the other side, on their opponent's side of the field. Uh, if you look at the Tigers, they've always, for the most part, started inside their own 20. And that's speaking volumes right now. Tiger quarterback T.J. Bell on the carry. He's a 6'3", 195-pound sophomore. And it continues the shuffle at quarterback for Savannah State as he gets a first down. Ball is going to be marked on the 28-yard line of Savannah State. Bell back to pass. He's getting heat, and he's going to be sacked. Sacked in there. Antonio Miller saying his name again. Uh, him and Elijah Richardson have been very active for this defense. That's going to bring... Up. A second down and about 16 yards to go for Savannah State, who has struggled in the second half to get momentum back on their side. Penalty fly on the field. And the defensive line looked pretty sure that that was on the offense. I think they were just trying to fool the referees there as they get called for offsides. Rattler fans enjoying 
This 24 to 7 a lead by Florida and I'm a late surge by the Rattlers who struggled in the first half to score. Savannah State second down 10 yards to go as Bell is back to pass. He looks he looks and he passes complete to DeAndre Sneed for about eight yards. That will not be enough for the first, but will put them in position to convert and see if the Rattler defense can stand up here. And on this side of the defensive line, Crutchfield, keep an eye on him. Second down, three yards to go to give us up the middle. And the running back finds some room on the outside. That's going to be a first down for Savannah State as Rashad Saxton. Gains about eight yards and sets the Tigers up at their own 47-yard line. And right there, the exact guy that I told you to look out for, uh, Crutchfield, he did not keep his assignment on the end there, uh, which is to contain. Uh, shot the gap, got closed in, and that's an easy run for the Tigers. First down, 10 yards to go. Savannah State putting together a drive. This is their attempt to answer the Rattlers. As Bell is back, he's being pressured. He's going to take off and run. He gains positive yards into Rattler territory where Savannah State will face a second down and six yards to go. And T.J. Bell seemed to have a, a few minutes to sit back and collect his thoughts there. Loads of time for the young man who showed some athletic ability to get on the outside of the Rattler defense. Tigers are set up at the Florida a and 47-yard line, and the quarterback on a keeper finds pay dirt as he gains about 13 yards up the middle. First down, Savannah State. And Willie, Willie Simmons and his defensive staff have to get together and come up with some sort of a QB zone, a QB spy, uh, because these quarterback runs are the majority of where their rushing yards are coming from. First down, 10 yards to go. Savannah State, ball marked on the 39-yard line of Florida a and Bell back to pass. And he's looking deep, looking deep. And a catch made at about the four-yard line. Sets the Tigers up. Deep into Rattler territory. Herman Jackson there on the defense slip right as the ball got there, and that's exactly what happened on the one on this side. Quarterback threw it a little short, gave the receiver a little time to turn around, make a play on it, and that's exactly what he did. Big play for Savannah State as they're knocking on the door as Bell gives the ball to the back who has left by a host of Rattlers at about the three-yard line. And it's going to bring up second and goal for Savannah State. If the Rattlers can force a field goal here, they pretty much have this, this thing wrapped up. However, if they allow the Tigers to score, it's just a 10-point game, and they're right back in. Eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Savannah State driving, second and goal, quarterback keeper, and he slips down at around the three-yard line, and he's met there by Elijah Richardson, and a host of other Rattlers is going to bring up third and goal for the Tigers of Savannah State. Now, I complimented T.J. Bell on, his comfort, or on how comfortable he was with the pitch earlier in this game, but there he just made the, the wrong decision. Slipped in addition to that, and they'll line up for another play. Third and goal, Savannah State on the Rattler three yard line to give is up the middle to Jalen McCloud, and he is stopped by a host of Rattlers in the middle of the field. Looks like your fella, Crutchfield, on the tackle. And there he is making a name for himself thus far this season. Redshirt sophomore 6'2", 20 out of Lake Worth, Florida. And the Tigers are going to go for this. Ball mark on the three-yard line. Fourth and goal, Savannah State. Big play time, and the quarterback is hit. Ball incomplete. Rattlers get the ball back. 
on downs, and the quarterback for Savannah State is down. And that's going to be defensive pass interference called by the ref right by the goalpost. And uh, I'm, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure about that one, though. That gives life to Savannah State as the penalty will give them a first down and four more downs to get a touchdown with the ball marked at around the two-yard line. That's a tough play for the Rattler secondary. I didn't see the receiver go for the ball. I didn't see the receiver ask for a call. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a weird one right there. But regardless, it was called. Looks like Devon Gibbons is in the game. The give is up the middle. Looks like it's Jalen McLeod who scores for Savannah State to get them back in the game with six minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the game. Savannah State on a two-yard run by Jalen McLeod have closed the score to 24 to 13. As Giovanni Lugo gets set for the point after. Kick is up. Kick is no, no good. good. And the Rattlers benefit from a missed PAT with six minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the game. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida and Bragg Memorial Stadium where Florida a and leads Savannah State 24 to 13. The pooch kick by Savannah State is recovered by Florida a and and the Rattlers appear to take over here at the 47 yard line. And there it is and they do. 24-13, as you said, on the missed field goal. That is actually much bigger than it seems right now. And uh, the Rattlers have to get not necessarily some points on the board, but some time off the clock. And, Afonso, when you think about Savannah State, here's a program that hasn't posted a winning season in 20 years. And so they've been under a lot of fire. Now, they've been a lot better since their head coach, Eric Rayburn, has come in. They won three games there. But you can imagine the pressure on this program to win football games. Definitely. It's, it's kind of similar to the situation of the Rattlers as Bonnet busts open another big run. He may take this one as well. And big run by Bishop Bonnet knocked out at around the nine-yard line of Savannah State. Big play for Florida a and As they play the replay, Bonnet in space again. This, What is his 40 time? <laughs> this guy is a flash out there. Bishop Bonnet. Great way to re read the blocker right there. Got some extra yards, almost scored. And sets up the Rattlers again in the red zone. Florida a and &M. Offense has been flourishing here in the second half. As the give is up the middle and Bonnet scores on a somersault touchdown <laughs> for Florida a and &M. He almost did a backflip there, I tell you. I don't think it was intentional, but it didn't look too bad. Florida and m two plays and 51 yards on the drive as the Rattlers extend their lead 30 to 13 over Savannah State. And Melvin, going back to what you were talking about before these two big plays happened, um, as far as uh, Savannah State coming off of some rough seasons, so is uh, Florida A&M as well. And uh, as you see all these people in the stands stand up, cheer, and be happy, that's what it does for an entire community when you turn the organization around. So, uh, though Rattler fans may not be rooting for the Savannah State Tigers tonight, uh, I'm sure they are in other ways because they can't relate. Well, the Savannah State Tigers will be leaving and moving down to Division II, and it's their last year in division in the FCS. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching me at football on ESPN3.
again, Savannah State is probably going to do pretty well at the FCS level, being that they competed here in the MEAC since 2011. So when you think about they're going to the SIAC and they face this level of competition, if you look at their roster, that's a lot of freshmen and sophomores that are getting playing time. So the Tigers actually want to exit the MEAC on a successful note. Uh, as they should, and, and how they do end this season determines how they go into the Division II play. Um, are you going to be a championship contenders, or are you going to be an opponent that underestimates uh, your competition every weekend and week out? Um, so I'm anxious to see what comes from this season for Savannah State, and I wish them the best. We're back, and Florida A&M has extended to a 31-13 lead. Five minutes left in the ball game as Savannah State comes back out and attempts to answer to a, a two-play 51-yard drive by Florida A&M on an impressive run by Bishop Bonnet. Rattlers just continue to strike. Uh, I heard uh, someone say as we were walking in, strike and strike and strike again, and that's what they've been doing thus far after halftime. Bill is back to pass, and he finds a receiver who is brought down after about a six-yard gain. And that's Orlando McKinley there on the tackle. Sets up the Tigers for a second down, two yards to go. Ball is going to be marked on the 34-yard line of Savannah State. A little over five minutes on the clock. And a big pressure and sack in there for Florida and and Terry Jefferson. We've called his name a few times tonight. Um, as with a few other players, um, this, this is going to be a, a morale-changing victory, it seems, for the Florida a and Rattlers. It is still early to say. A little under five minutes now, 440 on the clock. Um, but at the rate and pace that this Tigers offense has been moving. And as I say that, Gibbons explodes and gets the first down as he kind of barrels over, the, over a defender there. Um, at the pace that they've been moving the ball, if they continue that speed, I don't think it's going to be enough uh, in time to come back. Savannah State showed an explosive offense in the first half but they really have struggled to get things going here in the second half as a penalty marker is down on the play. But speaking with Coach Willie Simmons earlier this week, his point of emphasis is that it's a new season for the Rattlers in that this is the opening to MEAC conference football play. So he's on point because they lost to Troy and they lost to Jackson State. Their other win was against Fort Valley an SIAC school. So the Rattlers are uh, on track to get their first win in the conference, and that's the new season. Great point, Melvin, and that's something we haven't talked about much this broadcast is the fact that this is uh, both teams' first conference game. Um, and My coach would, would call these wake-up calls, the ones that you can uh, be falling from, and when you hit the ground, you wake up. This one you cannot. It is a conference game, and it means everything. Pass incomplete across the middle of the field. And that falls down on the ground from the hands of Tra Travayon Pratt, 6'3 wide receiver. He's a freshman. Uh, I think he just didn't want to get hit there. <laughs> Can't blame him. Three minutes, 58 seconds remaining here in the football game. Florida A&M with the 31 to 13 lead over Savannah State. Tigers, Gibbons back to pass, looking, fires at the last moment. It's going to be incomplete. Or possibly, nope, referee says he was out. Orlando McKinley tried to make a play on the ball. And no penalty called on the hit on the quarterback after the throw. Got there in time. So good defense there by the Rattlers. Rattlers defense has stepped up here in the second half. 
to make things difficult for Savannah State, a program that has been struggling to win over the past 20 years. The Tigers looked impressive in the first half. We'll take a timeout on the field. You I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. So, Mom, what do you think? Cross it. I was watching ESPN Plus. It's a standalone streaming service. You just watch it in the living room. Yes! ESPN Plus. More sports. $4.99 a month. Welcome back to Bragg Stadium where Florida AM leads 31 to 13. Tigers run a possession there on third down. And Right there, tackled inbounds. The clock will continue to run. I think uh, that the fact that the offense for the Tigers is moving so slowly is a testament to the fact that this game is pretty much wrapped up and, and, and finished. Melvin. Savannah State going for it on fourth down. Ball marked at their 27. Pass across the middle complete to their tight end. Actually... They were going for it, so never mind. And they also got it on fourth and forever. Big play for the Tigers who take a chance on fourth down and convert that fourth down. It's going to set them up at midfield. First down and 10 yards to go for the Tigers. There's a timeout right now being taken on the field. And if you think about it, the Tigers have struggled. And you made a point that Florida a and has struggled as well. There's a lot of excitement around this program and Willie Simmons. A lot of people were very disappointed with the Jackson State loss. But what did this, what this disappearance win do for the program? It, it helps them buy into Willie Simmons as well. Uh, the way that that game ended, uh, made it a little extra hard to, to cope with um, and, and time management playing a huge factor into it as well. Uh, but again, as we mentioned earlier, the players, not the fans, have to buy into the system. And until that happens, uh, you'll play a sloppy game. Willie Simmons brought over from Prairie View a and where he was successful there as they launch a big play pass that's incomplete. It was intended. Terry Ferguson was on the defense there. However, I do believe that Ronnie Stevens could have pulled that in. So back to our point of inference is that Willie Simmons brought in to revive this Florida a and program. And certainly you can see it in ticket sales and just overall enthusiasm throughout the program. Uh, it's going to be important that the Rattlers do well in the MEAC after being picked to finish number five. And the biggest thing that I'm hearing from the Rattler base, uh, the biggest thing that they're getting from, from Coach Simmons is presence. Uh, it's all about being there. It's all about how you talk about your team, which is essentially your family. And that's how they view you as well. And for the first time um, in a while, I believe that the fans in addition to the players both stand behind their coach even after a last second loss to jackson state last week they're still behind this coach and the savannah state quarterback gibbons is stacked deep in his backfield and to advance the conversation on willie simmons he's really interested in the complete development of the players Florida a and had four players that were baptized after the Jackson State game that Sunday. And it's about developing the complete player academically and setting them up to be successful in life. Good point, and that speaks to his character as well because uh, we all know we hear it from the athletes first, mostly. Uh, this game could be over in a second. Uh, it's all about what happens after 
or what happens in your mind during the things that actually can't be taken away from you that are much bigger than the game that we all love to watch on Saturday. So we are here at the two minute and 20 second, 26 second mark left in the game. Florida A&M holding on to a 31 to 13 lead over Savannah State in a key MEAC matchup, the first for both teams this year. Savannah State ball marked on the 43 yard line. Tigers went for a fourth down conversion and was successful. And they're going again as Gibbons is dancing around in the backfield looking, looking. Paul is complete to a receiver that's still running and is brought down inside Rattler territory. And that's where they will change possessions. And it, uh, I believe that's going to be the end of it for Savannah State. But again, uh, just something for Coach Willie Simmons and this defensive uh, staff to look at for the next game. These arm tackles have to improve for the Rattlers because it's just not going to cut it later on in the season. Well, the Rattlers, their next game is against North Carolina Central a team that pulled out a last-minute win over the Rattlers here in Bragg Stadium last year. So it doesn't get any easier for the Rattlers as they step on the road in MEAC play. Because they barely scraped by with the win last time, and it's going to leave that bitter taste uh, or bittersweet taste in the mouth of the Rattlers. So uh, we're just going to sit around and see if they come for a, or come out with a punch-them-in-the-mouth attitude or or what exactly they do, but I'm sure it'll be an exciting day. Time out on the field right now as Florida a and with a 31 to 13 lead over Savannah State. And Willie Simmons, as we said earlier, has really got the Rattler fan base up and excited about this football team. And you know, Alfonso, anytime you take over a program, this is really early in the season for him. It's going to take the players a little bit of an adjustment time to get used to this new system. Definitely, but all of this plays into it. Uh, whether you lose or win in those first few games, how you react to them and what you say, all go into how your players will feel about you. As Bishop Bonnet continues to be a beast for this Rattler offense, it's... He's close to another Rattler first down. And maybe close to 100 yards on the night after an impressive showing by this young man. Florida a and with a 31 to 13 lead over Savannah State. One minute and 48 seconds remaining in the game. And it looks like the Rattlers are gonna get their second win on the season. There's a timeout on the field. And as we continue to look, at the schedule, Florida a and as we stated earlier, is going up against North Carolina Central on next week. They come back here for homecoming against North Fort State. Then they go on the road for the bookend against North Carolina a and And here is a program, North Carolina a and that is impressive. Talk a little bit about their impact, not only on the MEAC, but on the nation. The they're, they kind of serve as a, a figurehead for what the MAC uh, wants to see. Um, they've been, they've shown success on uh, pretty much every level of uh, the offensive and defensive game uh, thus far in this season and in the recent seasons as well. Um, they've had a few players go to the league from there. Um, and that's ultimately the level that every MAC team or any team, period, wants to get to. And we all know it's going to be uh, a hard-fought game uh, whenever you line up against them. And a &T is under a new coach this year and have been the prize of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And the goal for everybody here is the Celebration Bowl, where you go up against a SWAC opponent. And certainly, 
Florida a and has a shot, but a and is definitely the benchmark right now. In anything that you do in life, not just the game of football, there's going to be obstacles. And uh, you want those obstacles to challenge you as much as they can as long as you overcome them. So uh, that's on this program uh, to face who they have to face when they have to face them and overcome those obstacles. Clock ticking, one minute and 17 seconds remaining in the game. Florida A&M 31, Savannah State 13. Stanley with the kneel down. And this moves Florida A&M closer to their second win on the season. Bonzo, the Rattlers seem to have found their offense in the second half. So you have to credit nice adjustments by the coaching staff at halftime. You have to credit those adjustments on uh, the offensive coordinator's behalf for Florida A&M. And also, um, I'm sure there was some sloppy defense and blown assignments on behalf of the Tigers. It all plays in together. Uh, but ultimately, the Rattler fans are happy with what they saw. Um, and they get to see yet another win here at home at Bragg Stadium. 30 seconds remaining in the game. Stanley kneels down, which effectively ends the football game as Florida a and is going to pick up their second win on the season with a 31 to 13 win over Savannah State. And ladies and gentlemen, before you go anywhere, we're going to go down to the field where we have Deja with Coach Simmons. Deja, take it away. Thank you, guys. Coach, the game started out a little slow, but then it looked like that block punt kick gave us a little energy. Well, you're being modest by saying it started a little slow. started very slow for us offensively. I thought the defense did a great job the whole game. I thought special teams did a great job of keeping us in the game. Halftime, we made some adjustments and started playing football like we're capable of playing offensively. And like I told the guys, when we do it right, we see how explosive we can be. Right, and Coach, I know you don't know this, but Morgan State just beat North Carolina a &T. How open is the MEAC? All I know is we just beat Savannah State, so we're 1-0. That's all we're going to focus on right now. Uh, we know we got a tough trip next week to go to North Carolina Central, but we're going to enjoy this win, uh, work tomorrow to get better. So we're focusing on the Rattlers right now. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, that's all for you guys. Back to you. Thanks, Deja, and our huge upset in the MEAC as we just talked about North Carolina NT being the benchmark ready to play every night. If you underestimate your opponent, chances are they overestimated you and they're going to show up ready. And I guess that's what happened. Uh, I'm ready to see that stat sheet, stat line, and highlights to see what exactly happened over there. Back here at Bragg Memorial Stadium, Florida A&M holds on for a 31, a 13 win over Savannah State. And the Rattlers get their second win on the season. And as we stated earlier, it's on to North Carolina Central. The Rattlers have to keep the momentum going. And Coach Willie Simmons isn't going to waste any time um, talking to his team. They're going to celebrate probably over this weekend. But come Monday, uh, they're ready to work. Um, so North, North Carolina Central, uh, get ready. The Rattlers are going to get ready. And it's going to be a wonderful football game. The celebration is on here at Bragg Memorial Stadium as the Rattlers win 31 to 13 over Savannah State and happy feelings. That guy, Bishop Bonnet, had a wonderful game. <laughs> this young man stepped up tonight and the Rattlers hold on for a 31 to 13 win over Savannah State as we continue here at Bragg Stadium. And right now, the Marching 100 is going to go ahead and play their song. As FAMU pulls out the win, 31-13 against the band.